It is wonderful to be here this morning. Amen. And as you've heard, I'm Pastor Irene, and I want to thank Pastor Gideon for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, I don't take it for granted that I'll be given the pulpit to speak. And I thank you for your covering, for your leadership, for your perseverance, for your direction for this ministry. God richly bless you. Amen. And of course, I want to thank King Jesus Ministry as well. Um, I've been, I'm still studying at the um, King Jesus University, and they're equipping me as a student. And one thing they say is the instruction that we are given as students is to be used. It is not to be hidden in the cupboard somewhere or on our devices. So what I've been learning today, um, I'm going to be sharing, or what I'm sharing today is something I've been learning. It has blessed me immensely. It is changing my life, and I pray that it will change your life too. Amen. So I thank Apostle Guillermo Maldonado um, and the team for equipping me as well. All right, so today I'm going to be speaking on the top, topic of renewal of the mind. Amen? Renewal of the mind. And there's something that um, Monica said when she was um, introducing today's topic. And she said, if you have a mind, then today's um, preach is for you. Amen? Is there anyone in here who hasn't got a mind? I'll pray for you right now if you don't. You do, then this message is for you. Hallelujah. Okay, so before I even get into it, I want us to look at the, the word renewal. Renewal. Um, there's a Greek word for it, anakinosis. Anakinosis, it's A-N-A-K-A-I-N-O-S-I-S. A-N-A-K-A-I-N-O-S-O-S. That's for those who take notes. And in fact, I believe I learned, I did this lesson last year. If I hadn't taken notes, I wouldn't have remembered it. So for those of you who don't take notes, start taking notes. Amen? All right. So that word, anakinosis, is a Greek word for renewal, which means the renewal of the mind, as we find in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. We'll come to that later. And it means an instance of resuming something after an interruption. Yeah? Resuming something after an interruption. But you ask yourself, what has been interrupted? Yeah? Well, the way God designed us to use our minds was interrupted at the fall at the Garden of Eden. Amen? God created our minds or, or gave Adam the mind that Jesus had when he was on this earth. So Jesus, when he wanted to get to his disciples who were already in the middle of the water, what did he do? He didn't call for another boat. He walked on water. Adam had the same mind to do exactly the same thing. But that stopped the day he disobeyed God and he was banished from God's sight. And then he lost that mind. And therefore we, from Adam, do have that fall in mind and we cannot do the things before coming to Christ, that Jesus did. Amen? But when Jesus came to die for us on the cross, he restored us. Restore, renewal. That is the meaning of renewal. An instance of resuming something after an interruption. Is that helping you? And so today, you need to know that if you are a believer, uh, a Christian, someone who has given their life to Christ, Jesus has restored you when he died on the cross. That is one of the benefits that you received for your mind to be restored. Amen. So today, if you're going to look at the renewal of the mind, we're going to see how that works. So the supernatural was the original natural in which man walked. Amen. And let me make it clear. When I say the supernatural, I've come to understand very clearly that there are two supernaturals. There's the evil supernatural and there's the supernatural power of God. So when I'm referring to the supernatural in this church, we say that we are transforming lives, we are equipping people, and we are growing in the supernatural power of God. Amen? So when I say that supernatural power, I mean the supernatural power of God, of the kingdom of God, the Jesus that we worship, that is the supernatural I'm talking about. Amen? Are we clear on that? Okay, so there'll be no confusion here. So, as I said, the original natural in which man walked uh, is what we're looking at. In other words, Adam... Um, it was normal for him to get up, as I said, in the morning, and he would say, well, I need to go from here to there. There's the water in between. What shall I do? Well, I'll just walk on water. That's what he did. And we have been restored, and that is how we can command situations to change, and they change when your mind is renewed. Amen? 
And today I pray that you begin to receive revelation in the kind of mind you have so that you can begin to walk the way Jesus walked. Amen? Hallelujah. So restoration... I'll get into the message in a minute. You need to understand these two words and then we'll get into it. Restoration, the part R-E, re, means to go back to the place where things were in the beginning. All right? So we are being restored. We're going back to the place that Adam lost. That is where we're going back. Amen? Hallelujah. So Jesus restored our mind through the finished work on the cross. But we need to appropriate it. We need to apply it. To our lives. Jesus has done it. It is finished, but we need to apply it. Amen. And I pray that as I speak today, the Holy Spirit will touch you and you will begin to know those areas or rather you allow the Holy Spirit to convict you to know what kind of mindset you have, which is not in line with what God has de designed for you and that you begin to change. Amen. You cannot leave this place the same today. You came here for a reason. And that mindset needs to change. Amen? Amen? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 31. But I'll read till 22 and then I'll come back to the other verse later. So Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 22. It says, This I say therefore, and testify... In the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have, taught, have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Amen. I'm going to be breaking this down, but I'll leave some verses out just so that we can leave this place today. Amen? Otherwise, you'll be here for a long time. So verse 17, we're going to look at verse 17. It said, you should no longer walk as the Gentiles or as the rest of the Gentiles walk. So I want you to consider the word Gentile as a way of referring to worldly people or people who live without God. Yeah, that's the word Gentile. And so as I'm speaking, and I'm speaking the word of God, you ask yourself, the life that you're leading... Is it one that you're leading as one with Christ or one without God? Only you can answer that for yourself. Amen? Verse 19. It says, their mind is past renewing. So they are now insensitive to the Holy Spirit and insensitive to conviction. That is why they live a lifestyle of sin. Amen? To live a lifestyle of sin, it means nothing touches you. Anything that is said to you goes in here and out of the other ear. But believers must not live a lifestyle of sin, but a lifestyle of repentance. That is why we say in this church, you live a lifestyle of repentance. Amen? Every single one of you live a lifestyle of repentance. Adults, young people, youth, you live a lifestyle of repentance. Now, Exodus chapter 30, verses 17 to 21, they'll project the New King James Version, but I'm going to read from... The Amplified Version, because that just explains it a little bit more. Exodus chapter 30, verse 17 to 21. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, You shall also make a basin of bronze with a base of bronze for washing. You shall put it outside the court or outside in the court between the tent of meeting and the altar of burnt offering. And you shall put water in it. Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet. When they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water so that they will not die. Also, when they approach the altar to minister to burn an offering in the fire to the Lord, they shall do the same. They shall wash their hands and their feet so that they will not die. It shall be a perpetual statue for them, for Aaron and his descendants throughout their generations. Amen. 
God gave Moses the law to pass on to the priest that this is what the priests are to do. Why am I reading it to you? You are a priest. Amen? It says in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 that Jesus has made us kings and priests to our God. And therefore, when you come to offer, you are a priest. That's why you're able to worship. That is a, a sacrifice that you're offering unto God. When you fast and you say, Lord, you have all of me. That is a sacrifice that you're offering unto God. So you are a priest. So before you come, before your God to minister to him, what you need to do? You need to repent. You need to repent. You live a lifestyle of repentance. So when we're saying that the priests need to um, repent, you're not talking about Pastor Gideon or the the, the, um, service leaders who come and lead service. No, we are referring to every single one of you. If you have a mind, then this refers to you. Amen? So we offer sacrifices and we must repent before we come before God. Why? Because you want him to hear us. We want God to hear. If you want to know why it is that you need to repent before coming to God, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And one of the things that we are doing as we are growing in the supernatural power of God is we don't quote Bible verses. We live it out. Amen? This is a verse or passage that some people know so well, and the minute I start reading it, you're going to say it with me, and I'll start. My people are called, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen? This is a favorite one, isn't it? If you want God to hear you, then you need to, one, humble yourself. You need to pray. You need to seek his face. You need to turn from your wicked ways. We are saying in this church, spend at least one hour to pray. Some people are so busy. Come on. An hour? I don't have time for that. But you want God to hear you? He's saying you need to pray. Not pray over your food as you're going to eat it. It's a good thing to do. But you need to seek a personal, intimate relationship with him. It is through prayer that you get to know God. Amen? You want your sins to be forgiven. You want your land to be healed. Yes, you could say that. I don't have a land that I farm on. Your land, your household, your family, your finances, your health, everything that concerns you, that is your land. Is this helping you? If we do not repent and we live in sin, we give the enemy the legal right to attack us. Amen? We look at lewdness in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. Lewdness. Another word for it, another big word. I don't know why they use big words. Lasciviousness. And that means the last of the flesh. The last of the flesh. So all these types of sin in verse 19 comes with unrenewed mind. Unrenewed mind. So those of you with minds in here today, by you not raising your hand, when I ask if who doesn't have a mind, you all have minds. So today I pray that your minds will be renewed. Amen. So what it says in verse 19, it says, Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to all work of uncleanness, to greediness. If anything is in what you do as a believer, your mind is unrenewed. Amen. And today I pray that it will be renewed. Hallelujah. We move on to verse 22. It says that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. So in order to maintain our deliverance, we have to put off the old man. Amen? Deliverance deals with the casting out of demons. So supposing that someone is oppressed, someone is depressed, someone is living a life of anxiety, going through fear all the time, and we take them through deliverance, we cast those demons out that we do. However... For you to maintain your deliverance, you need to crucify the flesh. So the things that you would do, that would take you to that place where you were taken, you were, we were taken from, you don't go there again. There are some things that people do uh, that they feel sad. You stop yourself from going there. The minute the thought comes to your mind, you rebuke it just like that. The absolute second, nanosecond, it comes to your mind, you rebuke it. Because if you don't, That is when it settles, and then you're going to need another deliverance. But deliverance is not something that you dish out just like that. 
You receive it, you maintain it. You maintain it. Is this helping you? The reason why people keep coming back for deliverance is because they don't put off the old man. And if you don't put off the old man, then there is always a chance the enemy will come back to influence and take you back to that place again. I saw this little clip on YouTube and I was freaked out. It was lunchtime. As, as I lunchtime, I browse, I'm thinking, yeah, you, food is going in your mouth and it's like, you eat more when you do that actually, but hey, who cares? So anyway, so I'm eating. And I'm browsing, and then I came across this little clip by nature. And the one was a little cow, or not little actually, a cow, a buffalo, something like that. That was um, somersaulting on the floor. It was going crazy, absolutely crazy. I'm thinking, what is wrong with this? And the person who was videoing said, now look closer on the top of the buffalo's head or the cow's head. So I looked, and there was a bird nest right on top of the head of this animal. Not just a bird nest, but inside, as it kept rolling over and over and over, a bird actually flew out from inside the head. I'm thinking, wow, how did the bird get inside? For it to have done that, it needed to have gone to peck once, again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, until it made a hole and they made its nest right inside. That is what the enemy does to you. The enemy will strike, he will strike, he will strike, he will strike, he will strike until he penetrates your mind. So you need to guard your mind. Amen? Deliverance won't guard your mind. I want to tell you that. Deliverance won't do it. You dying to self will do it. Amen? Hallelujah. Is this helping you? Okay. So uh, we're going to verses 23 to 24. Ephesians 4, 22, 23 to 24. And it says, and be renewed... In the spirit of your mind, and that you put on, you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So we put on the renewed mind and walk in holiness daily because if we are walking in the old man, we're going to be responding to things we shouldn't respond to. Amen? You need to put on the new man. I cannot do that for you. As I said, deliverance will not do that for you. Just as you are wearing shoes on your feet, nobody came here barefoot. Even if you did, maybe wearing socks, you did your laces up, you put those shoes on. So you put on the new man, and that is a daily thing that you do. Amen? The old man is the flesh. The sinful nature, that is the Adamic nature, we all have it in us. And we must put it off so that we don't give the enemy a foothold. You don't want to give the enemy a foothold. You give him a foothold... He'll open the door wide. He'll force the door open and come in. We must put on the new man and walk in the spirit and not the flesh. Amen? And by putting on the new man, you are submitting to God every day. That is when you resist the enemy and then he will flee from you. Amen? If you do not submit to God and you resist the enemy, the enemy will not go anywhere. When you, you submit to God, what you're doing is you're going to hide behind God. When you submit, you hide behind him. It's as though, um, I don't know, um, little children, when you want to greet them and they're shy, they go behind their parents. Yeah? And when they go behind their parents, it's the parents that you have to face. When you submit to God, you hide behind God. And when the enemy comes looking for you, who does he see? He doesn't see you. He sees God. And therefore, he has to flee from you. Is this helping you? So submit to God. Resist the enemy and he will flee. Until you submit he will not flee from you because he sees you. He's coming straight at you. But if you, you submit, he sees God, then he takes to his heels. Amen? Verse 25. Verse 25. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Amen? Simply put, don't be a liar. Is that helpful? Lying is a characteristic of the old man. It's as simple as that. Verse 26. In fact, I'll read from 26 to 30, and then I'll, I'll break it down. It says, be angry, 26, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath or anger, it says um, in some places, nor give place to the devil. Let him who steal, steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. 
Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good or necessary for edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Hallelujah. So we go back to verse 26. I'll break it down. I'll be real quick. Verse 26, it says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. So you can get angry, but you do not sin. You commit sin when you act uh, upon the anger that is in the matter of the flesh. We curse, yeah, uh, we fight, we argue, we condemn other people behind their back. But if someone upsets you and you surrender that to God in that moment, that is when you are letting go of it. I can assure you, if nobody has upset you before, nobody has made you angry, it will come. But I'm sure you have. You've gone through that. You surrender it to God, and in our heart you forgive, then that sin, uh, that is not sin in the eyes of God. So do not let the sun go down on your anger. What it means is, before you put your head on the pillow and before you go to bed, you forgive. The way Christ forgave you. You let it go. You let it go. And you let it go. Because Christ is looking at you for everything you have done, that you said you're sorry. It's forgiven. He's wiped it. It is a clean sheet. It is gone. You are forgiven. Amen? And therefore, if someone does something to you before you put your head on the pillow, what do you do? You forgive. You do what Christ did for you. Because you are not greater than God. You are not greater than Jesus. If he hung on the cross, he took your sins on the cross, he, nailed, he was nailed to the cross. In fact, it's not the nails that kept him there. It's the love that he has for you and I that kept him on the cross. And he took that upon himself and he forgave you before you go to bed. I'm sure you can forgive someone else. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So the Bible says if we don't forgive, God cannot receive our offering. He cannot receive our prayer life. Our prayer life will be hindered. We will not see fruit in our fasting. You'll be fasting. You'll be praying. But if you have unforgiveness in your heart, it is useless. You're just wasting your time. Because unforgiveness is an iniquity. Amen? So why do we need to deal with iniquity in our lives? God will not hear us if there is iniquity in our hearts or if there is iniquity in our lives. Amen? I've given you Second Chronicles 7.14 already, but here's another one to remind you why we need to deal with iniquity. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 to 2. Isaiah 59, 1 to 2. I'm reading from NIV, but you can read from um, New King James Version. It says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But what? But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not what? So that he will not what? So that he will not what? So if there is iniquity in your heart, if there is sin in your life and you pray, you fast, you do everything else, God will not what? He will not hear you. So that is why we deal with it. Because we want God to hear us when we pray. Amen? Ephesians 4, 27. We come back to Ephesians. It says, no, give place to the devil. Now, let me read 26 to 27 so that you get it in context. It says, be angry. Do not sin. I've covered that. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. No, give place to the devil. If you are not careful, you will let the devil use you. Amen? If you are not careful, you will let the devil use you. When you sin, when you and I sin, and we do not live a lifestyle of repentance, we give place to the enemy. Do you understand that? Is this making sense to you? When you and I sin, and we don't repent, we don't live a lifestyle of repentance, we give place to the enemy. So we know that he is a defeated foe. And this we learned, we learned on the discipleship, um, discipleship class a few, I think two weeks ago, I think. It says the enemy is defeated. He is dethroned and destroyed for eternity. Amen? He is defeated. He is dethroned. He is destroyed for eternity. And I remember teaching when I said on your status, WhatsApp status, some people have Jesus is coming soon. Some people have, I'm getting married. Some people have, I don't know, I've lost weight. Some people think, oh no, I'm too beautiful. Whatever it is on your status, Satan's status is, 
defeated, dethroned, destroyed for eternity. Hallelujah. You are not excited at that. Can you say to yourself, he is defeated. The enemy is defeated. The enemy is dethroned. The enemy is destroyed for eternity. Amen. 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 And if you have this at the back of your mind all the time, if you have this in your spirit, you cannot be afraid of him. Can you? Because that's his status. He's defeated for eternity. Amen? He doesn't have authority. The only authority that he has is what you and I give him when we sin. The enemy does not have any authority. So when we don't repent, we give place to the devil. When we approve a thought, instead of taking it captive to the obedience of Christ, what we do is that we give place to the devil. Amen? So that's why I said, as soon as, as soon as a thought comes to your mind, which you know it is not of God, a negative thought, a thought that is going to cause you to doubt, a thought that is going to cause you to walk in unbelief, what you do is immediately you hold it captive to the obedience of Christ. Immediately. Immoral thought. Immoral thought. Immoral thought. You hold it captive immediately. Nanosecond. That is what you do all the time. All the time. All the time. You don't allow it to settle. Amen? You do not allow it to settle. Because if you allow it to settle, you give place to the devil. Is this helping you, by the way? So a Christian who lives a lifestyle of repentance is going to face, listen to this, a Christian who lives a lifestyle of repentance is going to face a very weak enemy. Did you get that bit? But the Christian who lives a lifestyle of sin is going to face a very strong enemy. Is this sinking in? Is it sinking in? The Christian who lives a lifestyle of repentance is going to face a very weak enemy. The Christian who lives a lifestyle of sin is going to face a very strong enemy. Amen? God <laughs> has given you authority. There is power that Jesus gave you when he rose from the dead, which is in your hands. It's in your life. It's in your mouth. You need to exercise that. When you walk, live a lifestyle of repentance, that power is always with you. When you don't, you are weak, a very weak Christian. A very weak Christian. And when you live a lifestyle of sin, what you do is you take the authority that God has given you, that Jesus gave you when he died on the cross, you take it, you dish it out to the enemy, say, take my authority, now bully me. Take my authority, now bully me. Take my authority, do to me whatever you want. Now ruin my finances, ruin my children, ruin my home, ruin my career, ruin my marriage. That is what you do. Is this helping you? Is anyone confused? Who in their right mind is going to want to take authority that Jesus died for on the cross. He was, he was beaten. He received, was it 30, 39 lashes? And with every lash, it went so deep, his veins were being revealed. His veins were shown. It was so deep, 39 times, he bled so he nearly collapsed. But he still carried the cross for you. He died on the cross, went to Hades, went to Satan and said, now I'm here. Give me back that authority that um, um, Adam gave you in the Garden of Eden. He took it from him and he came, he said, here you are. You've got it back. And then you are careless and you choose to live in sin. And then you give it back to the enemy. You give it back to the enemy. You give it back to the enemy. And then you go and cry out to God, God help me. Is this helping you? A lot of people have Jesus as the Lord and Savior, but not the Lord.
The reason why we have discipleship pathway is so that we will disciple you to know your right as a believer and exercise that right. The reason why we, we encourage you to come to House of Peace is so that we will teach you the word of God. You will live in victory. But some people, they're happy with the fact that they have Jesus as a label. I've received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. That's enough for me. Don't talk to me about church. I'll come when I want to. Or I'll get here when I want to. That's another thing. They haven't made him Lord. Lord means someone that has authority. So if Jesus is Lord of your life, he has authority over you. He has authority over your mind, over your eyes, over your ears, over your finances. Amen? So if he has authority over you, and he says, now sit here, will you say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there? Those of you who work, you have um, managers um, above you or directors above you. They call you in for a meeting. Are you going to say, no, I'm not coming? <laughs> who says that? When they call, what do you do? You go in. Is that not right? And if Jesus is Lord of your life, he, is, he's, um, he has authority over you, and then he says, I need you to serve me with the hands I've given you. What do you say to him? I've given you feet. He says, go out there and evangelize. What do you say? Hmm. He says, I've given you money. I've given you finances. I want you to tithe to me. Give back something to say thank you. What do you say to him? Think about it, those of you who don't do it. These things, that so many areas. If Jesus is Lord of your life, he has authority over you, then when he speaks, you say, yes, Lord. So if that is not what you're currently doing now, you need to renew your mind. Amen? Ephesians 4, 28. says, let him who um, um, stole steal no longer. But rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. The message is do not steal. So if you are living um, in the unrenewed mind, the norm is to steal. And by the way, you can say, but I've never stolen anything from a shop. Okay, what about the, time that, the times that you waste? You go to work and you waste office hours. That is stealing, is it not? Okay, let me move on quickly. <laughs> verse 29, verse 29. My time is going away. Verse 29 says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good uh, for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. Amen? Do not swear. Do not curse. Let, the, let what comes out of your mouth bless other people. Amen? Sometimes out of, you'll be speaking to someone and then you say something. You go, oops, sorry. I didn't mean for that to come out. Really? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what you've been storing in your heart is what, oops, came out. Whoops, it came out. Why? Because it is in your heart. Amen? So when you keep the right things in your heart, the right things will come out. When you keep the wrong things in there, it's going to whoops. Yep, it will come out. One way or another. Is this helping you at all? So choose, choose to impart grace to your hearers. Amen? Ephesians 4.30. Ephesians 4.30, and it says, And do not grieve, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Before I say that, I need to go back. One thing that I missed. I want to say, do not conform. Do not conform even to cursing in your mind. I forgot that. Even in your mind. Do not conform to even rebellion in your mind. Even in your heart. See, rebellion is something that someone who asks you to do. Outward, outwardly, you do it. In your heart, you'll be cursing the person. Or if that person wasn't in the room, you'd never do it. Or you do it, you walk out there and you start talking about the person. Even in your heart, in your mind, in your emotions, deal with it. Conform means to take the form off. To take the form off. Do not conform to that. Is that helpful? Right. So I was on to, um, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. 
When we don't give place to the Holy Spirit, it grieves him. And what, this is what we do. We don't spend time in his presence or seek him. That grieves him. When you and I don't spend time with the Holy Spirit, when we don't make time for him, it grieves him. Let me explain to you. We have time to go to the cinema. Come and sit down here. You too. I want you down here. Come and sit down. Yeah? I'm talking to you up there, please. Okay, thank you. Right. We have time to go to the cinema. We have time to hang out with our friends. We have time to go to the gym. It's a good thing to go to the gym. We have time to take walks in the park. It's a good thing to do that. We do everything else on this planet. But when it comes to making time for our God, I am too busy. Set time aside to have a devotion. I am too busy. Set time aside to have a personal altar. Well, there's so many things I do in my day. How could I possibly do that as well? But we have been to the cinema. We've been to the gym. After work, we met a friend. We did everything. We cleaned the house. It's a good thing to clean the house. Don't live in a filthy house. Amen? You need to thank God for what he's given you. But if you have time for all these things on the planet... And you don't have time for our God. You don't have time for the Holy Spirit. You grieve him. Is this making sense to you? You were created so that you would worship him. And the way you say thank you to him, the way you have a personal relationship with him is to make time for him. Or sometimes, we come to church. We will get here what time we want. No matter what, time, what is said. Is this making sense to you? Some people miss worship. It doesn't bother them in the slightest. After all, they've come to church. What more do you want? Forgetting that the worship... It's not to anybody in here. It is to our God. And we grieve the Holy Spirit when we don't make time for him. The same person who walks in here late, every time, every single time, will never turn up late for work. I pray that God will touch your mind. That whatever mindset you have, that is not a renewed mind, today will be renewed in the name of Jesus. Because what you need to renew is different from what I need to renew. Amen? But whatever it is, that you not leave the place the same. Amen? So do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Set your mind free to worship God. Amen? Verse 31, Ephesians 4, 31, it says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and that means, clamor means perpetual animosity, or fault finding, right? That's what it means. And evil speaking be put away from you. That is, don't slander other people. Let all malice be put away from you. Do not be spiteful towards other people. Do not verbally abuse other people. That's what it means. Those who have unrenewed minds do that. Amen? These are the attributes or the um, aspects of the old man that we have to continually or continuously put uh, away daily. On a daily basis, continually, persistently, consistently put it away. Because guess what? The enemy, the little illustration I gave you of this bird that was able to make a nest in this animal's head, how I still cannot wrap my head around it. But the enemy is striking. He is striking. Even as I'm speaking now, he's striking. 
at your mind. He is striking at your mind. He is striking at your mind over and over again, taking you through depression, taking you through oppression over and over again. Over. Yours is to submit to God. Resist the enemy. He will flee. Amen? You cannot entertain these thoughts. Amen? So now to put away the old man continuously is to die to self. You need to die to self on a daily basis. I've told you deliverance will not deal with the old man, the old self, the Adamic nature. Deliverance doesn't deal with that. Dying to self deals with that. Is that helping you? We need to crucify the flesh. We need to die to the flesh. You need to deny your flesh. It, means, uh, it implies abstaining and avoiding, declining and renouncing the things that your flesh wants to do. Living an immoral life. You need to say, no, I'm not going to do it. Whatever that is. Amen? Pornography. You need to say, no, I'm not going to go on that computer. I'm not going to go on that magazine or whatever. Wherever it is found, I'm not going to go there. If it's immorality, no, I'm going to stop this life. Because if you do, you give place to the devil. Amen? Amen? To die to self, you need to constantly take in the word of God. Constantly, constantly take in the word of God. Pray. You worship. You fast. Because the enemy is looking for space, space, space in your mind. That's the battlefield. To occupy. And you're saying to him, no, I'm not giving you space. I am not giving it to you. I am not giving it to you. I am not giving it to you. So it is a battle. As long as you live on this earth... That is going to go on. You allow to him to win if you sit back. And you win if you give him no chance. And so for you to be able to read the Bible, what we've done is, as a church, daily devotions goes out every single day, except on Sundays. Some people never even open it once. And if they do, one day you can see that they'll open about six, seven weeks in a row and they're never to be read again. It is there for your own good. Are you taking this seriously? It is there for your own good. You need to renew, you renew your mind by reading. Renew your mind by reading the word of God. Renew your mind by worshiping. Renew your mind by praying. Renew your mind by fasting. Those are the things you do so that you can say no to the enemy. Amen? If you're not doing these things, then you are... Uh, uh, a free agent for the enemy to have. I need to be finishing shortly. Let me skip some things. Just to, it's important I mention this. The consequences. The consequences of not renewing our minds. What are the consequences? Our circumstances will become our reality. If you do not renew your mind, your circumstances will become your reality. How? Supposing you were born into a household where everybody was poor, but you have become a Christian and you haven't renewed your mind, what is going to happen is you are going to think that, oh, everybody was poor in my family, so I'm also poor. Whereas Jesus died on the cross for you. When he died on the cross, he took, he took your poverty and gave you riches. Did you know that? If you are living in sickness, he took your sickness and gave you healing. If you come from a line that has been cursed, you took your curses, gave you blessings. But if you haven't got a renewed mind, then you are not applying this. Next consequence, I need to rush through. Next consequence of not renewing your mind, you conform to the status quo. You conform, you take the form of whatever is around you. But you're not supposed to take the form of whatever is around you. Amen? You are not supposed to take the form of whatever is around you. So, Supposing at your hop site, you have two people coming, and there's more than two people that go to hop sites anyway. Supposing there's only two people that go. Do not conform to that. Begin to demand, as of right, those souls that you are ministering to. Because you are ministering to souls, why are they not coming? Begin to demand, as of right. Amen? You demand, as of right. That is what you do. Do not conform. We will not conform to where we are as a church. Amen? 
We will not take the form of what we are as a church. We are demanding us of right. Amen. We want to expand. We want to uh, 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 we want to um, yeah expand. That's what we want to do. We just don't want to remain where we are. So we will not conform. You should not allow yourself to conform to where you are. Amen. Supposing there are generational curses in your family, do not conform to it. Re- receive the renewed mind of God. Begin to cast that out. Bind, bind, bind that in your generational line. Bind it so that your line will be free. Amen? You cannot re- um, uh, live, live, live. You cannot conform to what has happened in your generations. Begin to change because Jesus has already done it for you. You just need to enforce that victory. Amen? You just need to enforce that victory. So we are renewing um, the mind in the name of Jesus. Amen? Another consequence of not renewing your mind is that you regress you become stagnant. Amen? You regress, you become stagnant. Have you ever wondered why? You became a Christian about five, ten years ago. Maybe five years ago, ten years ago, twenty, maybe a hundred years ago. And you are still right where you are. You can't pray for anyone. You can't change any situation. You just get up and come to church, go home. Get up, come to church, miss a few weeks in between, then again, then again. Same thing, same. Do you know why? Because you're stagnant. Amen? What are the consequences of not renewing our mind? Our circumstances will seem greater than God. Amen? Our circumstances will seem greater than God. But we've, read, we've heard Philippians chapter 2. I was marveling today. Philippians chapter 2 have come up over and over again. We had it at the pre-service uh, and prayer time. We had it again during the opening heritage. Philippians 2, 8 to 11. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, who Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on the earth, on those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as a result of humbling himself, Jesus died on the cross and now he's given the name he's given the name above poverty he's given the name above sickness he's given the name above every disease he's given the name above every cancer he's given the name above everything that the enemy is going to throw at you and the most exciting bit it says every name must bow the demons are going to have to bow at the name of Jesus the devil is going to have to bow at the name of Jesus so you need to know the name of Jesus so that you can use it you need to have a renewed mind so that you can call out the name of Jesus when you need it amen It is not just a name. It is the name that is above every name. Every name. It is above every sickness. Amen? So do not conform. Do not conform. Do not conform. When your mind is not renewed, we will have a lack of direction in our lives. Someone who has a lack of direction is passive. They don't use their initiative. They are permissive. They allow the enemy to take advantage of them. Do not be passive. Do not allow the enemy to take advantage of you because you are meant to enforce the victory that Jesus won on the cross. Amen? When your mind is not renewed, you'll be vulnerable to doubt, to temptation, to every uh, reasoning that comes to you. So you need to have the mind of Christ. There's a lot to unpack but I'm going to move on because time is running fast. Revelation can only be received when you have a renewed mind. Have you ever wondered why? You come to church and the service is so powerful and you're sitting there looking around thinking, when are they going to finish? Because you have an unrenewed mind. Your mind is not renewed. When your mind is not renewed, you conform to sin and you tolerate sin. You take the form of sin. Amen? Sin becomes the norm for you. You give an excuse for sin. You no longer repent of it. You tolerate it. When you conform to sin, you don't ask for forgiveness anymore. That sin becomes a habit. And then the habit will eventually become a conduct That conduct becomes a behavior. The behavior becomes part of your character. That character is who you really are in private and in public. 
And after that, it becomes, after it becomes your character, it will destroy your destiny. That is why it is important that you renew your minds. What are you like when no one is watching you? That's what you need to look at. You come to church, you put on the nice church face, you go home, and you are a nasty piece of works. That is what you need to look at. Renew your mind. You renew your mind. When your mind is not renewed, you'll be spiritually dry. You will be spiritually dry. People who are spiritually dry fall into religion. They fall into religion. God did not come to establish a religion, but he came to establish a relationship with us. God did not come to establish a religion. Hear that? He came to establish a relationship with us. Amen? So if you don't want your mind renewed, it means you are religious. Religious people resist change at all costs. They will resist you vehemently, totally, completely. You cannot move that chair. It's always been there. It has to be there. Da, 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 da. That, that is someone who is religious. You have to wear white socks to church. How dare you wear yellow socks? Uh, that is being religious. You have to wear a hat. Why are you not wearing a hat? That is being religious. That has nothing to do with the gospel. Amen? The spirit of religion criticizes it. It condemns the move of the spirit. That is what a religious spirit does. Are you condemning the move of God? If you are, you are being religious. Repent of your ways. And with this, I'm going to finish. Romans 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, present your bodies. Dedicating all of yourselves, I'm reading from the Amplified Version, just for the sake of clarity. Dedicating all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, it is your logical, it is intelligent act of worship. So the first of for us to be renewed, not to be conformed, is to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Amen? In the Old Testament, when sacrifices were presented on the altar, the animal was killed and the dead body was carried by someone onto the altar. Amen? When what Paul is talking about in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 is that you sitting here with a mind who is breathing in and out right now, you present yourself as a living sacrifice and put yourself on the altar. Amen? So that this will be acceptable to God. Amen? Because in the Old Testament, when the animal was brought, I've never come across the animal jumping off that altar saying, ooh, the fire is too hot for me. And therefore, you need to bring yourself to God. You present yourself. Why? By the mercies, because of his mercies. His mercies are new every day for you, every single day. How do you say thank you? You present yourself to him. Every part of you. Your eyes, your ears, your hands, your feet, every part of you, you present unto him. When you present, uh, then you'll send the fire. The fire, the fire that is come, comes upon you is, uh, is acceptance of the sacrifice. I can't go through the Bible verses I have right now. But in um, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 1, when, when uh, uh, the sacrifice was laid out by, by Solomon, I believe it was, that fire came down and consumed it. The fire coming, the presence of God coming upon you is God receiving your sacrifice. If you don't present yourself, the whole of you, there is no fire. You are dead Christian, stagnant Christian, religious Christian. That God doesn't approve of that. The purpose of the fire is to purify us. Amen. The purpose of the fire is to purify us. We want to dedicate ourselves to God. Please stand. We want to dedicate ourselves to God. We want to dedicate ourselves to God. There is an obligation to commit yourself to God. There is an obligation to commit yourself to God. There is an obligation on you to renew your mind. Amen? You present yourself as a living sacrifice. Paul urged the Romans... By the mercies of God to present the bodies as a living sacrifice. Today, I urge you, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And I ask you, please, do not conform 
to this world. Do not let your mind take the form of this world. Do not let the world form you. Do not let the world shape your mind. Renew your mind. Renew your mind in the name of Jesus. So I pray let the conviction of God come upon you right now. Let the conviction of God come upon you right now. Allow the Holy Spirit to convict you. As I've been speaking, the Holy Spirit has been reminding you things of you of things that you do. Maybe you are religious. Maybe you are living immoral lives. I don't know. Whatever it is that you are doing, that is not pleasing to God. Begin to repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. Can I have some worship, please? Begin to repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. Repent of allowing your circumstances to become a reality for you. Repent of conforming to the status quo. Repent of being a stagnant Christian. Repent of not growing, of not maturing in your faith. Repent of not building an intimate intimate relationship with God repent of allowing your circumstances to seem greater greater than God, repent of it repent of being passive, God has been speaking, the Holy Spirit is touching you right now, repent of it in the name of Jesus 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 this is between you and your God it's a conversation between you and your God right now. Repent of it in the name of Jesus. You are talking to God right now. The Holy Spirit is hearing you in the name of Jesus. Let go of your religious ways. Let go of your religious ways in the name of Jesus. Repent of tolerating sin. Taking the form of sin. You have conformed to it so much that you don't even repent anymore. Repent of being spiritually dry. Repent of not serving him. Repent of not giving your tithes and your offerings. In the name of Jesus. I surrender. As you're surrendering right now, they're going to sing the chorus to help you engage. Please, this is not the time to stand and pretend to be praying. You have a mind that needs to be renewed. Surrender your emotions. Surrender your will to him right now in the name of Jesus. 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 The old man will not do. And this goes for everyone. This goes for the youth. This goes for the adults. It goes for pensioners. It goes for me. It goes for watchmen. It goes for everyone. Surrender it all right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, do not walk out of here. Go and repeat the same thing that you have been doing. That is rebellion. Surrender it right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for your people. Father, I release their minds right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I release every single mind right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, every mind. Father, I hold it captive to the obedience of Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we are surrendering right now. We are surrendering our minds to you. Father, our minds belong to you. Our emotions belong to you. Our will belong to you. Father, we surrender it now. Father, we surrender so that, Father, we can have the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus, 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 Father, we surrender. We totally surrender, Lord, in Jesus' name. In you have two minutes. In that two minutes, I want you to come here right now. If you want to forgive, you want to be forgiven for walking in rebellion, want to be forgiven for walking in your ways that is not pleasing to God. You want to surrender it all right now, here, right now, in the name of Jesus. We will pray for you in the name of Jesus. We will pray for you. Come right now in the name of Jesus. This is the place to surrender. This is the place of total surrender. This is the place of total surrender. Do not allow the enemy to tell you that all is okay with you. You need to surrender right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Watchmen, please come. In the name of Jesus. Surrender. Surrender, surrender, surrender. In the name of Jesus. Surrender it all. In the name of Jesus. Surrender right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. You are in the house of God. When you ask God to forgive you, He will forgive you. So right now, in the name of Jesus. If you are standing there, it means uh, your life is sorted with God. Uh, it means you have no religion in you. It means uh, everything is okay with you. God sees your heart. Uh, God sees your heart right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Father, hear your people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And youth, if you want to come out, it is okay to come out. You totally surrender. You totally surrender to God right now. In the name of Jesus. You don't look uh, whether your friends are coming. You come by yourself. You come by yourself because the relationship is between you and your God. It's not between other people right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I give you glory. Father, I give you glory. Yes, sir. People are surrendering. As you're waiting to be prayed for, begin to pray. As you're waiting to be prayed for, begin to pray right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Surrender, surrender, surrender. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, shakara ba kora ba ba, shakara ba kora ba, shakara ba kora ba, kere be kere be, shakara ba ba, shakara ba kora ba. Surrender, surrender, surrender right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, yes, sir. Oh, Jesus is pleased with you. The Lord is pleased with you that you are surrendering right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we give you glory. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we are surrendering. We are surrendering our minds. Uh. Father, our minds belong to you. 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 In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Our minds belong to you. Yes. Uh. Yes, as you're standing there waiting to be prayed for, begin to pray yourself. Uh, in the name of Jesus. 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 Surrender, surrender, surrender. In the name of Jesus. God loves you. God loves you. Even as you're surrendering, God loves you. Today your life is going to be different. Right now, in the name of Jesus. 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 Father, I give you glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And as you are surrendering, as you are surrendering, I want to make an altar call for those who don't have Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If you don't know Jesus as the Lord and Savior, today is the day to receive him. You surrender. You also surrender to him right now. In the name of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you surrender to him. It is a grief free gift. It is a grief free gift that he's given you. And you cannot hold on to this. You cannot say, no, I don't want you, Jesus. You receive him. If you have backslidden in your faith, uh, this is the time to say, yes, Lord, uh, I welcome you into my life. Uh, I want to have that life with you so that one day when I close my eyes, uh, I will be with you in your kingdom. Uh, in the name of Jesus, this is for you. If you have backslidden, you don't know who Jesus is. This call is for you. In the name of Jesus. 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 It is for you. So this message of salvation is for you. It is a call for you. Receive the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. I have given you the opportunity. Receive in the name of Jesus. Father, I give you glory.
Jesus. We surrender to you this afternoon, Lord. We surrender to you that all of our hearts, all our minds, Lord, will be set on you, Lord, as you renew our minds, Lord. We refuse to let our circumstances become our reality. We refuse to conform to the status quo. We refuse to regress and become stagnant because Jesus has already won that battle on the cross for us in the name of Jesus. So today we make a commitment to being obedient to you, Lord, that our prayers will be answered, that you will hear us from heaven today. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 